pussy. I was once small as a shell among many shells, black as a cowrie's inner curve. If I allowed the wrist churn and tongue lash to break me, I would be no more than sand, so much grit to wash off, ground to walk upon. Soon enough, they would find a way to burn me up and look right through me. These men, angular as filed teeth, they would convert me into something I would hate to recognize if I let them claim me that small and that expensive as their own. And so I made myself a stronger thing, a taut flash of muscle wrapped in bone. I am lean and quiet, common as a mouser. These fools believe they own me because I paw through their houses and eat what they can't stand. We're in Berkeley. I have heard two tree hugger comments today. I'm gonna go fully in that peace knit tree hugger direction. I wrote this poem in 2003 during that shock and awe ramp up to the Iraq war that was gonna just take a second. This book just came out in 2011. Daisy Cutter. Daisy Cutter is, uh, I'll describe it in the poem, but it's a weapon. Daisy Cutter. Pause here at the flower stand. Mums and gladiolas, purple carnations dark as my heart. We are engaged in a war, and I want to drag home any distraction I can carry. Tonight, children will wake to bouquets of fire that will take their breath away. Still, I think of my life. The way you hold me sometimes, you could choke me. There is no way to protect myself except by some brilliant defense. I want the black iris with their sabered blooms. I want the flame flowers, the peony, the sunflowers. I will cut down the beautiful ones and let their nectared sweetness bleed into the careless air. This is not the world I'd hoped it could be. It is horrible the way we carry on. Last night, you cataloged our arsenal. You taught me devastation is a goal we announce in a celebration of shrapnel. Our bombs shower in anticipation of their marks. You said this is to assure damage will be widely distributed. <coughs> what gruesome genius invents our brutal hearts. When you touch me, I am a stock of green panic and desire. Wait here while I decide which of these sprigs of blossoming heartbreak I can afford to bring into my home. Tonight, dreams will erupt in chaotic buds of flame. This is the world we have arranged. It is horrible this way we carry on. Any of you have like some serious parking tickets in this crew? <laughs> There's a guy who lives uh, way down on Ashby who has this fabulous uh, um, as uh, MG that he bought at the San Francisco auto auction. 
and uh, it was like $450 and it didn't start. And he opened the trunk up and he saw all of these parking tickets that were from like right around Hastings Law School. And he figured it was just some law student who got so many tickets that he just left the car. So he bought it for $450 and it was a blown fuse. And now he's got this fabulous car. That's a state I'll never go back to. Once I got over the problem of not knowing how, I couldn't go back to not curbing my tires. But it took a while to get past forgetting to register street cleaning hours. And love, love was my handicap. Though I had no permit to hang from my rear view. So I collected seven or ten little slips I had every intention to pay off. Except I skipped town for the summer and returned to find the guy staying in my apartment tossed them. I'll admit, I was relieved not to face these expensive reminders of the girl I'd been, how stupid I was about life in the city. And as I finished school, was moving south for good this time, and as I lived then in a state of great anticipation, the potential of a record never crossed my mind. But now, on account of those parking tickets, I can't go back there with a car. Though everyone who loves me knows I love that tiny window each October in the south nub of the state you can't reach without driving. I missed it once and waited a whole year regretting the lost chance to track the linden leaves' tiny migrations. The next fall, refusing to endure that state of desolation again, I asked everyone who loves me to please meet me just south of the border. We ordered green mussels. We ordered popcorn shrimp. The mussels, the shrimp beat the mussels to the table. I was the only one who hadn't filled up on a grande egg cream. I drink for pleasure, but since I left that state, I haven't found any delicious enough to entice. So I ate all the mussels. Crouched later in that state of betrayal that comes from learning some green things aren't good. <laughs> Considering the law of averages, inertia, that anybody in motion stays in motion unless faced with an equal or opposite force, peer pressure, scatology, the projected near immediate devastation of world forests should certain highly populated nations generally adopt the US model of toilet paper consumption. Germ theory, my own role in depressing the mean average of common human hygiene, I knew I never wanted to be anywhere near that state again. With extradition, with reciprocity, I was hardly away at all. When I first rolled over, my parents were pleased, and just as quickly, I left the state of never having rolled before. Ditto slumping on all fours to crawling. And once I could walk, we all knew I was never going back. I just pulled myself up and started moving. I grabbed at everything I could reach. Until I learned better, I put my tongue on anything. Once, I ate papaya straight from the tree, and then I mourned the abject state of the crated fruit. I, living in that state, in my ignorance, thought I loved. I denounced such love. I married a local. I taught myself how to keep his garden. I swear. I'm staying away from that stage for good. All right, while we're on the idea of travel and such, my lover who lives far, my lover who lives far away opens the door to my room and offers supper in a bowl made of his breath. The stew has boiled, and I wonder at the cat born 
from its steam. The cat is in the bedroom now, mewling. The cat is indecent, and I, who am trying to be tidy, I, who am trying to do things the proper way, I, who am sick from the shedding, I am undone. My lover, who lives far away, opens the door to my room and offers pastries in a basket spun from his vision. It is closely woven, the kind of container some women collect. I have seen these in many colors, but the basket he brings is simple, only black, only nude. The basket he brings is full of sweet scones, and I eat even the crumbs, as if I have not dined for days. My lover, who lives far away, opens the door to my room and offers tea made from the liquid he's crying. I do not want my lover crying, and I am sorry I ever asked for tea. My lover, who lives far away, opens the door to my room, pretending he never cried. He offers tea and cold cakes. The tea is delicious, spiced like the start of our courtship, honeyed and warm. I drink every bit of the tea and put aside the rest. My lover who lives far away opens the door to my room like a man loving his strength. The lock I replaced this morning will not keep him away. My lover who lives far away opens the door to my room and brings me nothing. Perhaps he has noticed how fat I've grown, indulged. Perhaps he is poor and sick of emptying his store. It is no matter to me any longer. He has filled me already so full. My lover, who is far away, opens the door to my room and tells me he is tired. I do not ask what he's tired from, for my lover, far away, has already disappeared. The blankets are big with his body. The cat, under the covers, because it is cold out and she is not stupid, muse. <laughs> Amen, as if on cue, just at that moment. One last poem. Thank you so much to Lyrics and Dirges for this great evening. Thank you for my fellow readers, several of whom are like heroes of mine, so I'm super happy to be able to be reading with them, and several of whom are up and coming heroes of mine, so that's cool too. And thank you, all of you, for coming out tonight. Sunday morning. Desire swung like that, like her legs in procession like perfume from a censer on its linked chain, heavy as smoke in the hold's light desire. A church, a cathedral, the body in that robe, the robe sash swinging, the progress through the sinning body to this sacred spot, a man kneeling, a man with head bent, a man lifting his prayer to a woman. Desire, desire, desire. Grant us grace. Thank you.